Dear students, good evening. Welcome to La Excellence IAS. Let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 22nd June 2020. We have announced certain new programs for this COVID-19 season. In this, we have kept in mind the time which is available for you, the four months of time, and we have designed these particular courses. All these are value added courses. And you can contact the respective numbers which are given below to know about these particular courses. Before going into the discussion, let us talk about the personality of the day, Ms. Aruna Sundarajan. She is an IAS officer of Kerala Cadre. Later, she became the secretary of uh, Department of Electronics and IT at the Central Government. She is renowned for her Akshaya project in Kerala. When you read e-governance, uh, always you can quote this Akshaya project in Kerala as an example to inculcate e-literacy. What is the biggest gap with regard to our digital journey? That is digital literacy. So the digital divide is can be majorly attributed to digit, lack of digital literacy. So achieving this e-literacy has become the objective of Akshaya and this project is renowned across the world today. As usual, we'll be looking into DEEP, that is Daily Editorial News Analysis or Enrichment Program, followed by Targeted News Analysis. The list of the articles covered over here is given here, and then their respective pages in Hyderabad and Bengaluru editions is been provided next to it. Along with the discussion, the test is also conducted in the evening, and the test is available to you at the following link on elearn.laix.in. The first article is Fighting a Double Pandemic. This article is written in the context of the COVID-19 crisis and gender violence it is perpetuating. What the author is trying to say is, every pandemic always affected the women worse compared to men. Gender relations are also filled with violence. In this violence, who are the victims? Women are the victims. So women can be considered as marginalized and state has to take the responsibility towards this marginalized woman and state has passed various welfare schemes and programs and also laws to protect the women from the violence domestic violence act equal pay for equal work and added to that dowry acts all these are meant to create a level playing field in gender but however gender inequalities and injustices continue in our society. So in this context, how the COVID-19 pandemic played in these gender relations? So first what we can say is, women are more vulnerable to pandemics. Why they? They are systemically susceptible in our societies. The major reasons are this. If you observe in a family, woman is the last one to consume the food. It means our nutritional levels are low. And added to that, health is um, very precarious it means that multiple pregnancies associated blood losses and other conditions like anemia these make women most vulnerable for various kinds of infectious diseases and added to that the healthcare industry most of the people employed in this service industry are women so their exposure becomes very proximate for the infected so that's why the take home point is women are systematically vulnerable to various infectious diseases especially pandemics it is clearly proven in the case of ebola pandemic in east africa and the second is because of these pandemics, the little financial independence which the woman has achieved, either in small, medium enterprises, it has been lost. As the financial independence is lost, their agency over their own lives is also lost. So that's why the loss of financial independence is significant in the midst of COVID-19 crisis. So in this context, we need to understand a point. Gender violence has an economic cost. You know that women are productive capital human capital to a given society and women are subjected to violence and undue pressure ultimately it affects on their productivity so in this context in this particular uh, essay the author quotes a study conducted in seashells 
what the study says is gender violence in this country led to the loss of gdp estimated gdp by 4.625% so the take home point is gender violence has an economic cost and then this author is a representative of commonwealth so from our prelims perspective let us try to understand commonwealth if i am not wrong 54 countries are there in commonwealth now after maldives left they are expected to be 53 countries british colonies which are formerly british colonies and now sovereign countries they have come under common umbrella to protect human rights to promote democracy and for a collective prosperity as commonwealth the queen of england she represents as the chair of the commonwealth she is the head of the commonwealth now there are two countries mozambique and rwanda though these are not the colonies of the great britain still they are part of the commonwealth today so there are few countries even which are not part of the previous col or which is not a previous colony of great britain is part of this particular thing so just know so this is just a cultural and a democratic arrangement so there is nothing called trade or foreign relations expected or strategic relations expected out of it the next article is china policy lacks perspicacity so this is a too difficult word to pronounce hope i have pronounced it right so perspicacity means the necessary shrewdness and estimation of reality appreciation of reality understand that 1962 war was a great debacle for india why india lost 1962 war and did india learn any messages out of this is the question always we have to consider what are the strategic perspectives china is looking at to understand its present tactics so in this case in 1962 war nehru was guided by idealism before that so nehru was looking at afro asian solidarity promoting nam and bandung conference and he was very much resentful about capitalism in this context hindi chini bai bai was the slogan and cho and lai he has visited india and there is was a personal rapo between nehru and mr cho and lai but today the existing nda government states the nationalistic objectives are its primary goals and the country has to be more transactional in its international relations rather than being idealistic and it has to be purely guided by self interest so in spite of being transactional it is not perceiving what is the danger china is possessing it is acting with lot of laxity it is more reactive than proactive these are the messages which the author is trying to send so why india is not clear in its mind or india is not acting strategically so article 370 it is been repealed and a separate union territory of ladakh is created so of in the, and added to that india made a statements on liberating aksai chin and pok pak occupied kashmir rather than government of india few ministers in their individual capacities made these irresponsible statements you know that china pakistan economic corridor which is very vital for economic prosperity of china and huge investment of china are where invested is going through pok gilgit baltistan region of pak occupied kashmir and this gilgit baltistan region india claims sovereignty over it and raised objections to china and the next is article 370 repeal it has brought ladak under direct control of government of india so china is worried that aksai chin and other strategic regions india is trying to change the facts on the ground or india may become resurgent on these areas and added to that china has its own intentions so china do not want to be equalized with india china claims itself to be an assertive rising global power so in this assertiveness china is undermining india and its role and second hyphenation of india and china is the last thing china wants on its space and 
China wants to create an irritation within South Asia for India. You see, there is hand of China or is expected in the case of Nepal's recent claims on various regions which belong to India. So, India in the backyard of India, China is making a deep entry. So China's problems are not just with India border problems. These are there with almost every country it shares borders with. So in this context, especially with India, resurgent India, China has a problem. You remember during the times of George Bush, he has proposed for a democratic access against communist nation. This democratic access is expected to consist of uh, India, US uh, and then uh, Australia and Japan. So this democratic access he spoke about uh, and China has seen, with, seen it with a lot of suspicion. And later President Obama also indirectly spoken about containment of China. Among all these policies, the central player which they are want to depend upon is India. So in this context, China wants to make a strong political statement that India has to play on its side in changing global political order. India cannot be on to the other side of China and India has to be kept defensive. And how India has to be kept defensive? by encouraging Pakistan militarily and also economically. So Pakistan receiving all kinds of support from China and China is considered as all weather friend by Pakistan. So because of this to confine India to South Asia and also to make India to play its to its tunes in changing global political order, China has resorted to these things. Here author says, India has to leverage its relations with other democratic countries without losing its autonomic decision making in foreign affairs. So it shall keep its autonomous space and at the same time it has to collectively leverage its goodwill to fight the might of China. That is what author is talking about. Next article for discussion, India's continuing two front conundrum. See carefully. 1962 war and 1971 war 1962 war with china and 1971 war with pakistan are quite different with regard to the decision making of india is concerned there is a popular statement you can find a solution only when you perceive the problem in 1962 defense minister mr krishna mohan krishna mean i'm sorry and then Prime Minister Nehru did not consider China as an adversary. They never thought China will involve with a war with India or they will fight with India on border dispute. They never thought about it. Even Army General at that point of time, Mr. Thapar, he has advised Mr. Krishna Menon on this matter and Krishna Menon has kept a deaf ear to it. And in 1971 war with Pakistan, India perceived the problem better. As India perceived the problem, it was able to stop USA coming in support of Pakistan and also China coming in support of Pakistan. So before 1971 war, India going in support of liberation of Bangladesh, there was a peace agreement. The Treaty of Peace, Friendship and Cooperation was made with the USSR. It means in case of any third country coming against India, USSR shall be supportive of India. That was the agreement made. This agreement kept the USA and China away from supporting Pakistan in 1971 war. How we are able to take up such a diplomatic action just before the war because we have perceived we are able to see an all-round effect of this particular war. But in 1962, exactly that has failed. So in this case, author says, India has to pursue a double front challenge, which it has. On one side, Pakistan, the other side is China. Enemy or uh, the next article for discussion is members as numbers. This is a very good conclusion if you can give on Rajya Sabha. Rajya Sabha members shall not just behave as numbers. They have to behave as responsible leaders on the floor of the house. So why the Rajya Sabha's significance is deteriorating over years, that is what we need to discuss here. 
In Indian politics, what is the significance of Rajya Sabha? It is a federal house. It is supposed to protect the interests of the states, as are known. But over a period of time, the members of Rajya Sabha more act on political lines, on party lines, rather than acting collectively in the interests of the state. And added to that, let us take another example. Manmohan Singh, J. Ram Ramesh, these people are getting elected from different states where they are highly not arls. They are not identified as leaders there. So it means the Rajya Sabha positions are more seen as a back, back entry channels for the people who are unable to win the Lok Sabha elections. And the next is, slowly, the bills are being certified by the speaker as the money bills. You know that when a bill is certified as a money bill, Rajya Sabha has a very limited role with regard to that. It can discuss at a maximum, it can delay the bill by 14 days. So, if you talk about other bill, it was designated as money bill and sent it to Rajya Sabha. So, certifying by the speaker a bill as a money bill is also undermining the Rajya Sabha. And the next term, the composition of Rajya Sabha is changing. Previously, the people in public life, higher intellectuals, these were given Rajya Sabha seats. Now, majorly the businessmen, they are entering into the Rajya Sabha. So, the business people and celebrities, when they are becoming the members of Rajya Sabha, their absenteeism, lack of interest in public life, this is affecting the functioning of Rajya Sabha. So, in this context, there is a famous case, Kuldeep Nair versus Union of India and others case in 2016, in which Supreme Court has commented that um, other than composition, the Rajya Sabha is functioning no way different from the Lok Sabha. It is just becoming a rubber stamp kind of, that is what is expressed. So in this context, um, the Rajya Sabha originally designed to be a revisionary house, to avoid hasty legislation, to ensure that uh, proper check exists in our federalism and also proper check exists on popular motives of Lok Sabha. So this is the time the Rajya Sabha has to revive its own spirit. It shall not just become a house of deadlocks, shall not become just a house of rubber stamp. It has to find a golden mean to ensure itself relevant to the changing circumstances. The next article for discussion is secrecy of ballot is key for free elections. So what is free election? Free election means we shall vote without any fear or pressure or favor. That is what is called free election. When voters are able to freely express their opinion through their vote, then democracy will survive. So in this context, when we have an open ballot, what will happen? Ultimately, it will lead to some kind of social pressures political rivalries or use of force against the individual to exercise their vote in a particular direction. So in this context, what the Supreme Court said is the secret ballot is essential condition for free elections, which is stated under Section 94 of Representation of People's Act. So this privilege is given to every voter. It is the discretion of the voter either to have it or to discard it or to waive it. That is what Supreme Court stated. The next article is additional funds are sought for Jal Jeevan mission. Additional funds are necessary for Jal Jeevan mission. So you know that this Jal Jeevan mission is a flagship project of Jal Shakti ministry. What is the objective of Jal Jeevan mission? To ensure water supply to all villages by 2024. What kind of water supply? Piped water supply at the rate of 55 liters per individual. At the rate of 55 liters per individual, we have to ensure water supply. That is the objective of this Jal Jeevan mission. So in this scenario, the funds are necessary. So 15th Finance Commission, it is supposed to give certain funds to Panchayati Raj institutions. What this Jal Shakti ministry asking is, um, these Panchayati Raj institutions, whatever the funds you are going to give, rooted them through us. So when you root them through us, we can ensure their accountability and also their implementation of five-year village action plans which we are proposing. That is what they say. 
So it means the funds have to go through us rather than going directly to panchayats. It means in a way it is suggesting for what? It is suggesting for centralization. Is centralization good? No. So the decentralization and giving untied funds to panchayats is spoken for years. And Jal Shakti, Jal Shakti Ministry's proposal to centralize the panchayat funds and to have control in its hands and to have a tied fund which is meant for providing drinking water alone is something going backwards in time rather than going towards decentralization. That is what it speaks about. In this context, in this slide, we speak about uh, the Jal Jeevan mission. What are the essentials of it? Uh, please try to go through this infographics. By 2024, piped water supply to all through converging the central and state schemes. So normally, center and the state, they spend 50-50 on Jal Jeevan uh, mission. And uh, creation of local infrastructure, see carefully. Why the water resources are depleting? What we have to do? So in this context, Jal Jeevan mission focuses on three things. Rainwater harvesting is one thing. And the second thing is um, recharging of the groundwater and finally laying the necessary infrastructure for recycling of the water. These are the three things which it is proposing for. Just go through this infographic to remember this Jal Jeevan mission. It is important for prelims. Next is, for minor tactical gains, um, on the ground, China has strategically lost India. Let us see the opinions of uh, the former ambassador to China, Mr. Gautam. What he says is, uh, India-China relations went back in timeline. So we have uh, Border Peace and Tranquility Agreement, uh, that is BPTA, which was signed way back in 1993. And both the countries also have interlocutors, special interlocutors, appointed on this. In this context, a lot of diplomatic work is being done to take the things forward. And with this one single incident, China has pushed China-India relations back in timeline. And it is expected to deteriorate further for the disadvantage of both the countries. In 1988, Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi has visited China. After 1962 war, this is the time when a revival talk was being made with regard to Indo-China relations. At this point of time, this long handshake between Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi and Deng Xiaoping, this is remarkable. That is where Deng has called as Asian century. If this Asian century would have to be built, India-China shall cooperate with each other on global stage. But it appears more a myth if we see the actions of China. And the next is, what India has to do? One, it has to continue its strong military posture. And at the same time, it has to keep its diplomatic channels. What India has to talk strongly is for status quo ante. And the next step. Previously, the skirmishes at the border are disconnected with other relations. It means the trade will move on irrespective of the border issues. But however, if we see the mood in India, there is, a, in, there is an example or there is a chance that the trade will get worst affected. And Chinese companies are pitching for 5G networks in India and we have to wait and see how the government responds on this. Please go through these questions and answer these questions. In the following, consider the following statements. You have to identify correct statements. In this question, you have to identify the incorrect statements. Now, let me answer one question for you. As these are incorrect statements, only former British colonies are eligible for membership in Commonwealth. Wrong. We have example of Rwanda and Mozambique. The chair of Commonwealth heads of government meeting would be rotated among the member countries. Yes. So heads of government, chair of the heads of government, see carefully. The chair is permanently by Queen of England, but heads of government, they rotate. So as they are asking for incorrect statements, one is the answer. Thank you very much. And your support will make the law excellence and the students to grow in this institute. All the best.